Hi everyone. Welcome to Monday Night Live Crafting. Hope everyone's had a good week. Hi Kerry. Hi Angie. Hi Glenda. Hi Carrie. All right. How is everyone on this miserable day? Hi Anita. Miserable day in Brisbane. Today it's rained all day. Everything feels damp inside. I'm not enjoying it. Oh, thanks for sharing, Angie. So, the, um, the winner of this week's, oh, last week's live is Glenda. Um, so, Glenda, I'll pop something in the post this week or next week. I still haven't posted Lisa's off either. So to get in the draw for that, you need to just um, comment and like and share my video. And you can go into the draw for that. So tonight I thought I'd um, do... Oh, what I really wanted to do was use this stamp set. And then I decided, right, I've got all these... Um, papers because what I did I went um, I don't have much of the ink colors that are about to retire so I've done pretty well in getting rid of those and I actually had a full pack of this um, but what I've done because there's a lot of paper that you get in that I've gone um, in with a few demos hi Julie and we've got um, like half a pack or a quarter of a pack of each so one of us buys one. Ah, oh, no worries Glenda oh, it's just miserable here it's today was actually quite cool compared to what it has been but it's just raining and it's yuck so because um, these papers are really good especially when you get a stamp set or something that doesn't really have coordinating papers these are awesome but <clears throat> Hi Megan, even for a demo that is running this as a business and makes loads of cards, I think there's a lot of paper in these um, these packs because you get 48 sheets. So going in with a couple of demos or a couple of customers, a couple of friends, um, certainly helps break up and you don't end up with so much paper then, which is what I've done, but I've still got an awful lot of paper here to use and so I thought... I wanted to use this stamp set and go through and use some paper. So my first choice of the paper was I wanted to use this, <clears throat> the ink colours that are retiring. And I am so, so happy I do not have a full sheet left. So I did use my last full sheet tonight that I've already cut up. So I've only got a couple of strips left and... I'm pretty happy with that. Oh, nice, Megan. I only got it the other day. I've been umming and ahhing about it for a while. And then I've seen some really cool cards with it. And I thought, I'm going to get it. So, I don't often get too many stamps that I've got a colour in. Because I just find um, colouring is not my forte. So then I kind of sit the stamp there and not use it as much as some other stamps. But I've tried to prep a few things tonight. Um, so let's get into it. Oh, lovely, Julie. It is going to be sad to see them retire, Glenda. Out of the most recent um, in colours, the last few years, I think these are nearly my favourite. Although I did really like Lovely Lipstick last year. But... Um, Rococo Rose and Pretty Peacock are my absolute favourites and then Seaside Spray. 
so I'm really going to miss them. So we're going to pop that one to the side. So I thought we would do... Yes, Seaside Spray. I thought we would do a bit of a fun fold card. So what I've done here is I've cut I, I love fun fold cards but I also like to make sure that they don't use too much cardstock <laughs> three packets of it Julie um, I've got about six sheets left but I've only got like this much ribbon left and I'm like oh because I really like the crumb cake with it do I buy another thing of ribbon or not but I've got a full roll of the terracotta tile because I have not even op well I have opened that stamp pad but I've never used that stamp pad so it's just it's not my color um, but everything else I really like so I'm sitting there deciding what I should buy and what I shouldn't before it retires. Um, so back to fun folds. I like to do fun folds, but I also like to still be economic with my card stock and make sure that you get a full card. <laughs> That's all right, Megan. Terracotta tile and Calypso coral, I think are very similar colors. So they work well together. Um, so with this card, it's using the portrait Cut. So you need you get your full card piece of cardstock, A4 cardstock, and cut it down the middle. So you cut it at four um, 10.5 centimeters, and then you score it in half, and then you put the score line in at two inches, and cut, and then you cut the next piece at two inches and cut, and then you've got a little piece which is a smidge under two inches, and that's how we've got this. Now I've got done my layers already so I just want to make sure I've got my right right layers with my right pieces because the smidge is just a smidge probably wouldn't matter so much but all right so we're going to layer these pieces up we'll just put that white piece to the side now, we should not run out of seal tonight. I ran out of seal and seal plus at my class on Saturday whilst doing my video. So they are both recharged and ready to go. I like having the layer of white underneath because it just gives it an extra bit of pop. Did everyone have a good weekend? When is money for class due? Um, oh, thanks, Julie. So for the stamp set, DS, uh, the April stamp set class, it's the 24th of March, Megan. And for the DSP class, it's the 3rd of April. that up. That's all right. And then we can lay this one on the actual card. Sometimes I find with the red on red it gets a bit hard to to see so I just open up that cardstock to make sure there's a nice even border around that especially when it's dark and it's this late at night with dodgy lighting so that will be how the card goes so there's the white piece in there
and that will sit there. And then the piece that we cut off can either go in the middle, like you can kind of stick it anywhere, depending on what you want to do. Now I want to have some sentiments and this has got some pretty cool sentiments here. You're a tough act to follow. Always be yourself. Hey, girlfriend, you can count on me. Your kindness touches my heart and I love my besties. So, I think... I think we might use Hey, Girlfriend on the front. So, I'll stamp that over there. And then... I'll put always be yourself. This one. Get my block. And I think what I'm going to do is stick it over to this side and stamp so you can see. No, I might stick it over to this side and stamp over that side. Don't be surprised, but I have this stamp set. Oh my God, that's two of you then. Oh, De Megan, do you have this stamp set or you just love it? Usually I use all products that you ladies don't have. But you've got teenage girls, don't you, Julie? This would be a great stamp for teenage girls and birthdays and, and stuff. And see, it, both of you have got it. And then I think I might stick the little puppy dog. Down in this corner. And the little kitty cat in the other corner. Now, when I stamped this earlier, the kitty cat is on a bit of an angle. I'm just going to get a scrap piece of paper. If I stuck a sticker on it, it'd, that's better. I need to have it really on an angle. <laughs> I've got a, um, a six-year-old niece, <laughs> um, Julie, and God, she's got some attitude and sass. <laughs> so... <laughs> can't imagine what she's going to be like when she's a teenager. Uh, that away. So, now I do have some blends here. Got crumb cake for my animals and I'm gonna do poppy parade which is this red is poppy parade for the little heart and the little flower Surprised you're not watching maths, M Megan. Um, I can't really talk and colour at the same time because it takes so much concentration for me to to colour. But you'll be pleased to know I've done a lot of the colouring already. <laughs> I haven't had to watch it much this year, Megan, because my husband is obsessed with it. And he fills me in blow by blow. So, <laughs> multitasking, Julie. It's quite good, except my husband's um, away on Monday nights at the moment for the next couple of weeks but 
he's been filling me in. So I do have it taped, but I haven't even had to watch the taping because he kind of fills me in. I'm just doing a bit of, this is my version of shading. I'm not very good at it. Just go where the, the lines are on the stamp. And then we'll just go over again with the light and blend that in a bit. <laughs> I just can't believe it. it's such a train wreck. But that's what everybody wants. The drama. That's why people keep watching. All right. Oh, missed that end bit of his tail. Right. So that's the inside done then. Now let's get our seal. And line this up. Can you believe I'm decorating the inside of a car? I don't often do that on video. I'm just gonna get my bone folder and just really burnish that crease so it sits down a little bit. Okay, so then when we stick this on, we only want adhesive on the top part and the bottom half. So don't go too adhesive crazy. Need to have some adhesive on there. And so you just line it up and you line the bottom up with the bottom of the card. Make sure it's straight. So some people do this with an acetate piece, but you know what, if, if this piece is big enough, you don't really need the acetate piece to stabilize the card. So. Oh, I move that, stick that down. If you've got a really thin piece here, then obviously you would want a piece of acetate or something behind that. Now, if you want, you could put another piece over that so you don't have that on the inside, but I don't think that looks too bad. And then what I've done here is I'm going to get that piece of paper back in and just test how this stamps. I need to just turn it there to get it a bit straight because I've already done some colouring and I've stamped this girl. Oh, that's a little bit crooked. And then what I've also done is use some of the DSP to stamp. Oops. So I've stamped that image again here on the, the DSP and then I've cut out her skirt. So I've just stamped that straight onto the DSP and then I've just cut out the skirt. Now when I've cut this out, you don't wanna to leave too much of a border but you do wanna make sure you leave the black outline of the skirt there. So then get the seal. and then stick that on. So this is called paper piercing. And so this is what you can do when you're not very good at coloring or blending. And how good's that? So then that goes on. The stamp does all the image, all the work for you. 
And then I've just had to color the hair and the bow. Thanks, Megan. <laughs> That's my cheats way of doing it. And I think that bit, I've used cinnamon cider for her hair. And I'm just looking at that. And this is probably not a bit of hair, but it just looked funny being so white there. Thanks, Angie. So that's the first card tonight. So, then the next card I wanted to make, I'll probably put some gems on that later when I finish, was this one. Now, I want to participate in a blog hop that's coming up that is going to have, um, it's a colour challenge. So, I thought I would try and incorporate that tonight because I haven't made anything for that yet. And so, the colours are Night of Navy, Misty Moonlight and Balmy Blue. So I've got this piece of Whisper White that I've um, embossed with the Scripty folder. And then I'm just getting the Misty Moonlight because I haven't used too much of the Misty Moonlight. I've used the cardstock that will, um, the card base is gonna be in Night of Navy. And then the layering piece is in um, balmy blue so I thought this way I could incorporate the misty moonlight and it not be too dark because I tried using the blends on when I did the coloring and it was a bit darker than I had anticipated I'm not sure that I've used misty moonlight blends before they're nearly as dark as the um, night of navy so, all right, so I'm just going around and just adding a bit of color to this, but I don't want it too, too blue and too dark. So you can always add more color. I, when I blend, I try and hold the whole tip and then I always have a bit of scratch paper and you get that smudgy bit off and then start in a circular, a circular motion and then you get a much nicer finish. <laughs> it's different, isn't it, Megan? We all have different things that we use. Even the Night of Navy I find quite dark, so I only ever seem to use the light Night of Navy. So, Um, you can always add more colour, but you can't take the colour off. So just keep going until you've got the colour that you want. Might add a little bit more up here. And I'm happy that there's still white bits on there. So we'll put those away. Um, so. This is my balmy blue piece, so we'll layer this and I will use four bits of adhesive on this on all four sides. Well, if I can put that on straight. Ah, 
And then again, I've got the Knight of Navy piece. So this is, um, each of those pieces of DSP are double-sided. So they are the spots that we used for the um, previous Poppy Parade card. This time I'm just going to use this checkered piece here. Or textured piece. I'm just going to add that. In about the center I just wing it I don't measure it and then adhere that to our card base make sure your script is up the right way Then we can stick this piece on the inside. Then I've got the white piece for the inside too. Just debating what to stamp in there. I'll just layer that in there. Okay, so then I've stamped this image here. The girl with the glasses and the ruffled dress. And I've coloured her. Now I've used crumb cake, I think, for her hair here. And I've used the dark balmy blue. Oh, my um, Blackberry Bliss does that, Angie. Um, I've used the dark balmy blue because my light balmy blue doesn't, it's pretty dry and I haven't replaced it yet. So I need to replace my light balmy blue because I've used that a lot. And then I've used the dark um, and light Misty Moonlight on the skirt. And then the bows in Misty Moonlight. And I'm just leaving her top in blue. I need to colour her shoes. I missed her shoes. So this is light Misty Moonlight. Gotta make sure she cover colours her shoes. So adhere that. And so this is the largest stitched oval. And she just fits on there. It's a good good size. And then the largest scalloped layering oval. Gonna stick that on there. Mm, with some dimensionals. Using all the edge pieces. I'm going to just move that over to the side and not center it because I haven't got a sentiment and I kind of want to do a strip. Oh, thanks, Julie. And I need to order a new pack of uh, Night of Navy because I seriously only have scraps left. I do not have a full sheet of Night of Navy. So that has to go on my next order. But I kind of want to do 
like a strip across there for my sentiment. Um, might do I love my besties with this one. Hopefully that's going to fit in there because I'm just using a scrap. Now, I will probably just stamp this in Misty Moonlight because of the colour combo challenge I'm doing. That's a bit juicy, Angie. Mine, I don't use it as an ink pad very often like that, but it's a bit juicy. So, you'd only just have to be lightly tapping that. So we might get my little trusty. You're making me like this set. Oh, that's nice. Question girls, who puts their stickers on their stamps? Not me, as you can see. <laughs> um, I don't. I even when they were weren't sticky, I never had an issue. Um, st having my stamps stick to my ink my blocks but a couple of my um, downlines and other demos that I um, have craft days with they stick theirs too but I just find sometimes they stick to the clear blocks too well or they stick to the stamp case too well and I feel like I'm pulling the stamp apart when I'm trying to pull it apart okay so we want this as But there's not, I don't think there's any right or wrong way, Angie. You just, or Julie, just work with whatever, whatever works with you. So I'm just eyeballing this. I am going to trim that down a little bit, though I don't like too much gap there. So I don't know what size this is going to end up being. But I reckon you could do that. It's not like as soon as I saw it, I thought teenage girls. But the more I've seen the stamp and stuff, I think um, like I call all my team and stuff my besties and they're all girlfriends, so they could be a good team stamp. I don't yet have any male demonstrators on my team. I'd love to have one. I just don't know. Besides my son, I don't know any males that really want to stamp. And my son's only five, so he can't join just yet. All right, oh, I'm pretty happy with that. Look at that. And then I did just look up just before the video started. And I think I want that there. Um, and found this misty moonlight. I didn't, but now I do because I feel like I should see where I'm stamping. Yeah, each to their own, Julie. Um, this Misty Moonlight Twine. That, I think this comes in the Forever Fern bundle or something. So. And I'm still obsessed with tying bows this way. And getting the double or triple bow. Sign them up, Angie. Yeah, I'd love it. I, I know some great male demonstrators and they're so talented. 
um, but none personally. How is Hunter looking school? Oh, he loves school. Glenda loves it, loves it, loves it. Absolutely loves it. Loves his teacher. That's why our blinds fell. She got me started. <laughs> That's all right. Just going to trim those tails a little bit there. We're going to dimensional this. Now, because this is already dimensionaled, we're going to stick dimensionals on this side. We'll get it underneath there. They're so easy, Megan, and so addictive. Okay, and then just a glue dot on there, I think. I was going to dimension it um, again, but... Oh, I've got to take the backing off that silly Vicky. There we go. And then a glue dot on this one. That's probably a little bit big, but that's all right. I like that. So that's the second card tonight. So I've got one last card. Now I have um, got my instructions for this and I haven't had a chance. I tried, I was going to try really hard to um, make it to make sure I didn't make any mistakes on the video um, before, but I've just run out of time. So the instructions for this comes from Lisa's Stamp Studio. Lisa um, Curcio, I think is how you pronounce it. She's an American demonstrator and it's a waterfall card and she's done springtime in it. So this um, tutorial she's got on her website. So if you go to Lisa's Stamp Studio, you can pull the measurements and everything from there. Um, and there's a, a video on it where she only does that, that video. But I'm kind of changing it up a little bit. So hopefully it's going to work because I've watched a video and I've cut all my pieces. But I haven't had a chance to put this all together. So this one we are using the Rococo Rose. And then I'm layering it with the crumb cake. So we've got the inside piece. That's the inside done. You can stamp and decorate that. Then this outside piece. So this was my last full sheet of the DSP so I wanted to use the checks so I'm going to layer this up make sure I've put adhesive on the right side I've not ever made a waterfall card like this before. So we've got our pieces here. So what I've done, I've just stamped all of the girls and I've coloured them all in Rococo Rose and different shades of Rococo Rose. Their hair is in um, 
uh, cinnamon cider and then the animals I did in um, crumb cake and a bit of cinnamon cider. And so I've got the balloon on the last image. So then they all get layered onto these pieces. And I've just changed the measurements here. Um, Lisa has a quarter of an inch gap on hers. I only do an eighth of an inch gap on mine. So you just do what, what you want. And I've added an extra piece of layering. Like I, I've just used her piece, of, her instructions just for the mechanism piece. Um, the rest I've just done myself as my measurements, how I normally do it. When I had this in my head last night after I watched her video, I um, kind of thought just their heads would fit. So when I've stamped them on these sides, hi, Marie, um, I was surprised how much of them fitted on this stamp. So you could obviously stamp a little bit higher up and get more of them on and their dresses and stuff. But So then what you need to do, you need to get a piece this is for the mechanism part. You need to get a piece that is um, two inches wide and nine inches long. Now, the only reason she uses two inches wide is so that it fits in to the punch. And I've obviously gone just a little bit over two inches. So it fits in here. Um, but you could make it as wide or as skinny as you like. You do need it a bit wide to um, to be stable enough. So then you punch one end and then the end that you haven't punched, you need to score and you need to score at two inches two and three quarters, three and a half, and four and a quarter, okay? And then this will be your bottom piece towards here. So we need a bit of ribbon here. And I'm gonna have that much, so I don't have much of this ribbon left. Look, that's it. Like two rolls around the roll. Um, this ribbon, I don't know how this will go because this ribbon is not, it's quite stiff and bulky to tie bows, so we'll see. And then we need to do some stamping. Now we want to stamp a greeting down here. And I'm going to stamp, your kindness touches my heart. And you want to stamp about halfway. And when you're doing this, you want to make sure you've got flat images. You can't have popped up images or anything like that. They all need to be flat. So... Then you've got this strip here. Now, um, Lisa measured like one and a quarter inches up. So I'm just gonna be there. Let's just a little mark there and when we stick tape down here we only want and we should use a very strong adhesive so you only want tape on the outsides because you need it to be free in the middle come on where's my seal here I should 
should get my silicon mat out because I've just stuck adhesive on that. Come on. Ugh. I'm finding because it's so damp, my cardstock is quite soft. I should learn to put it away. So, stick that down. And then this goes underneath that. So you want to center that. I think we need the ribbon under there first. Let's stick the ribbon on. Um, so thread that through and then pop these through. Okay, now you don't obviously want to pull this too hard because the that will break, but you just want it tight. And this ribbon is not the greatest because of the scallop over it. So... Just trying to fix that so it's not so loose there. And then pop that underneath. And you want this straight. It's good using the checkered paper for that. And Might just trim those tails a little bit because they're too long. Oh, come on. Okay. And then on your panels here, it goes one, two, three, four. So where your score lines are, you need to stick down what your first image will be and this will be your last image. So my last image, I think will be this girl. So she can be here. Right. That is just a little bit over two inches. So let's trim this down. All right, hopefully this works right. otherwise you're going to see the white underneath it. I should have done that before because I knew it was a bit over two inches when I stuck it in the punch. Okay. Yep. Stick that back under there. Line this all up again. And then this one also gets stuck here. And 
and then we'll have this one, this one, no that one can go there, so then these ones you just want adhesive on the, the top. And I'll have this one. And then I'll have this one. And then what should happen when you pull this, ta -da! and there's your message. So then you can push that back up. Isn't she talented? So, and then you pull it back down and voila! Look at that and I've not practiced that beforehand at all. So it all works very easy. So go on, check out Lisa's um, post. She's got all the instructions there. She's done it with the springtime um, springtime joy stamp set with the rabbit and the lamb and then she's given you a bonus card with the goats as well same concept I think I'm going to do the goats change that up a little bit and I'm going to do the zebras too so I think this is a fabulous card and look at that but you need these to be flat so you don't want pop-ups I could have maybe stamped that a little bit higher up here um, but yeah live and learn I could stick another image down there too so we've got the three cards tonight that we've done whoops I've got mess everywhere so this is the first one the with the poppy parade and the fun fold here this was the one that I made in all the blues because it's a color combo challenge that I'm doing for a blog hop this week. And then this one I just wanted to make because I think this is an awesome card and Lisa made it look so easy. And I've done it. Very happy with that. So hopefully you ladies enjoyed that. And... Um, See you all next week. Thanks for stopping by.